In this video, I'm going to tackle the rather serious question of what do we as projectors do when we're in a situation where either we are being threatened or somebody we care about is being threatened? Like how the hell do you wait for the invitation? Should you even wait for the invitation to speak in situations that like this that are unsafe? So that's what I'm going to talk about in this rather serious and somber but very important video. Now, if you're a projector and you've been playing with human design for any length of time, you probably know that our strategy as projectors is to wait for the invitation. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I'll link some that are useful in the video description down here. You'll know that there are a really wide range of situations where it is incredibly useful to wait for the invitation, even to speak in a group setting, even to uh, share of yourself in a one-on-one -on -one context. But I had a comment on one of my YouTube videos and obviously felt quite vulnerable for the woman to share it because when I went in to acknowledge her comment, she had deleted it. So I'm not going to read the comment word for word because I want to honour the fact that she chose to remove it. But the point that she spoke to is so important that I'm going to share the essence of it here in this video. And that is she was feeling threatened in a situation because somebody was not taking sufficient care of somebody that she loved. And so if you're in a situation where somebody is threatening you or threatening somebody you care about or even threatening a member of the public and you feel this urge to say something, I want to be really clear. Human design is supposed to be a tool to empower you, to support you, to help you live into the power and the beauty of who you were born to be. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where your body is like, I have to do this, but human design says this, fuck human design. Listen to your body. It is trying to keep you safe. So let's talk about what happens for the body when it goes into stress. And we're going to pull on what I know about trauma, the nervous system, and working with the human body here, right? So broadly speaking, there's two parts of my work. There are three. There's knowledge about human design. There's what I teach about tapping, and you'll always find more resources to all these things here on my channel. Um, and then there's the nervous system informed information that is now bleeding into the two of those, bleeding in a good way, <laughs> um, informing those two other parts of my work. And what I can tell you is that your autonomic nervous system, whenever you hear the, the term autonomic, think automatic, it's the same thing. So your autonomic nervous system automatically responds in stressful situations when you are feeling unsafe. So whether it's you have been threatened, somebody you care about has been threatened, or you're watching an injustice that you're like, I have to say something, right? So in those stressful situations where you feel unsafe, where you feel bad, your autonomic nervous system is going to do one of three things. The first thing it's going to do is automatically react in a way that looks like a fight response, or it's going to look like a flee response fight or flight. Yeah. So they're the first go-tos. Now your body will automatically default to one of those two. And most people seem to, in my experience, default to one or the other automatically, rarely both. So I default to flight. I identify as a runner, like I like running. And anybody else who likes running probably defaults to a flight response, as in when there is a threat, we get the heck out of there. Right. That's our automatic reaction. If you are somebody who likes martial arts, who tends to get in arguments a lot, who finds that they want to speak up automatically and will give people a tongue lashing, you might have certain gates in your human design chart highlighted or activated by different planets that are a lot of this fight energy. Now, I have none of that in my chart, um, but other people do have fight energy in their chart. So if you're any of those things that I just rattled off there, then you might be more likely to fight. Now, there's a good chance that if you're in a situation where you feel unsafe because you or somebody else, somebody you care about or a stranger has been threatened, if you find yourself feeling like I have to say something and this urge moves you towards the threat, then that is your fight response coming online as a projector. If you go to say something, and the other person doesn't hear you and doesn't respond by backing down, doesn't respond by resolving the issue, then you know that they didn't hear you. And you can keep fighting if that feels appropriate to you, 
But what I can say is if you're fighting, if you're speaking up, if you using that fight energy does not get the response that you want to help you feel safe, then it's time for a different course of action. Now, at that point, if you are paying attention, if you are witnessing the part of you that's fighting, if you, it depends on how triggered you are. If you're super triggered, you may not even be able to have any access to witnessing what you're doing. But if you do have the ability to witness and you recognize, as I speak up, nothing happens, which is what was happening for this woman who commented on this video. She was speaking up and nothing was happening. In that case, if you can have the awareness of it, what I want to encourage you to do is switch to your flight response and get the hell out of there because that is going to be the next most appropriate action that you can choose to keep yourself or your loved one safe. So if it's yourself, if it's somebody that you care about, that you can take with you, even if it's a stranger and you can remove them from the situation, then that is a going to be a much better resolution than you speaking up when you weren't invited, if nobody is hearing you and nobody is changing their action, right? The whole goal here is for you to be able to make sure that you can stay safe. We can't live into the potential that our human design chart shows if we're not safe. And so some situations call for us to pull on those strategies to help us survive because you can't thrive. Think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs if you know it. You can't thrive unless you first survived. Okay, we don't talk about that anywhere near enough in human design. We get all carried away with self-actualization. But if you're in a situation where you feel threatened and unsafe, forget about living into your potential. You have to stay safe in that moment. If you are somebody who your default is a flight response, you will have left already. Great. Now, I want you to know that there is a third thing that can happen. Our autonomic nervous system is going to reach for a fight or flight response first. However... If it deems that they aren't working or won't work, then it will, faster than you can think, it will default to a freeze response. They are your only three options, regardless of the other F words you may have heard. <laughs> um, they are your only options. So if you notice that you are frozen, that you are stuck, that you want to say something, but you don't feel like you can because you're like frozen in place like a deer in the headlights and you can't believe what you're witnessing, that is because your system is really overwhelmed. And if you have enough awareness, hopefully maybe you can hear Carolyn's voice in your head moving forward. If I'm frozen and stuck in place, what can I connect with in my environment? We call it orienting. What can I orient to that helps me feel a little bit safer so I can defrost just enough to be able to then move into a fight or flight response? So hopefully that all made sense. Let me see if I can recap and catch anything that we might have missed the first time around. So yes, if you're a projector in human design, it is essential for you to live into the power and the beauty of your design, for you to learn how to shut the F up, <laughs> which I had to learn in most situations and wait, wait for the preciousness of invitations. But the exception to the rule is when it feels unsafe for you to wait, for you to not initiate speaking about something that is not okay. And if you speaking up does not change anything or it makes it worse, then it's important to see if you can possibly get yourself out of that situation. Just because you want to speak up doesn't mean the other people are going to hear you. Just because you want to speak up doesn't mean the other people are going to hear you. And you still have to work out an appropriate way to keep yourself and your loved one safe in that process. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube to send it to more people who it could, could really, really benefit. And if you can think of any projector who you know really needs to hear this message, can you share this video with them today?